When you deploy overseas in the military, coming home is the most important thing. No matter where you are, no matter what your mission, in the back of your mind, you're always counting down the days until you can come back home. I mean, it's coming home that makes you a veteran, right? You know, taking off your uniform, becoming a civilian, returning to the life you had before. But we know all too well that for some veterans, coming home is a real challenge. Some don't do it by choice. Their careers are cut short by injuries or by force reductions. Others come home to broken families. And others experience wounds that are mental and physical and that last long beyond when their part in the conflict is over. And for family and friends who want to welcome their beloved military home, it can be really hard too. They may be confused or not know what to say or how to say it. I was, a, I was a cavalry scout in the Army National Guard and an artillery officer in the United States Marine Corps. Um, and for the record, that was all during peacetime. In 2012, I went to Afghanistan for a year working as a Department of Defense contractor. I was repairing the x-ray scanners they used at the gates to check people and vehicles for IEDs. After I came home, I worked as a chaplain at a Veterans Administration Hospital in New York City, and I attended several workshops or trainings by the veterans group Soldier's Heart. Because of my experiences, I've come to believe that we isolate ourselves as veterans and as families welcoming people home through the stories that we tell. The first story that some veterans tell themselves is that no one can understand what's going on but me. And I, I'm, some soldiers, and I'm going to use the term soldier throughout this homily, and I apologize to the Marine Corps and the Navy and the, and the Air Force and the Coast Guard, but it's just easier that way. What some soldiers experience can be extreme and certainly unique, but this idea that they're, that they're alone keeps them in isolation. Now, let me talk about two th specific things, PTSD and moral injury. PTSD is the, is the condition that's the result of experiencing bodily harm or extreme fear of bodily harm. Now, sad to say, we all know too well how civilians experience this too. If you're a woman in a domestic violence situation, you might, you might show symptoms of PTSD. If you're, if you're involved in an industrial accident or the victim of a violent crime, that could happen. That PTSD could result too. Similarly with moral injury. Now, moral injury is a condition that arises when someone perpetrates or fails to prevent or witnesses an act that transgresses what, something that we really know is right. So uh, an example of this in the military would be uh, when a soldier inadvertently kills a civilian. But a, when a policeman shoots an unarmed suspect or uh, a subway operator runs over someone who jumps in front of the train to commit suicide, they might experience moral injury too. I think it's important to understand that, that we, we need to think of these, these conditions as human conditions, not as something that purely happens in the military. And that, that, that idea will help military folks who come home to their communities find allies, find supporters, and find, find people with common experiences within their own community and, and hopefully feel less isolated. Another story that we tell ourselves is that all veterans are heroes. And if you've ever walked through an airport or watched the ceremonies of the football games, you know what I'm talking about. Now, first of all, let me just say, I in no way diminish people's military service, uh, myself, my own included. But I do say that this story has a way of glossing everyone's individual experience. Some folks come, go over there and come back you know, having done things that they really regret. And this gets back to the moral injury thing. Or if, you know, if you're one of the 3,000 people who is sexually assaulted every year in the military, you may not feel like your service was very heroic. 
you've probably heard the old cliche, thank you for your service. When people say that to me, I don't really know how to react. I mean, frankly, I've seen, it, I've seen people say it to me when they're trying to justify something bigoted or really narrow-minded that they said, and they're implying that they're also a patriot. But in fairness, I also hear it from folks who are coming from a, a really good place and mean it in earnest. The next story, the, the hero story is kind of funny because there's also this story that we tell ourselves that all, all veterans are victims. Everybody in the military is a victim. And this is the idea that people who join the military are trapped in some sort of economic and social brainwashing and that they were powerless to make a decision for themselves about what, whether to be there or not. You know, and, and I, have to be, I have to say, this is a favorite one of some liberals, and there's even a Unitarian Universalist who wrote a book that seems to imply the same thing. Now, I don't think they, could, they couldn't be more wrong, and it's also very harmful. This implies, I think this demeans military people because it, because it, it implies that they have no agency, that they don't have the ability to make their own decisions. I think most people who join the military are pretty excited about the opportunity. And you know, speaking for myself as a white upper middle class man, like I joined the military and I got prestige, I got money, I got training, I got to travel to interesting places, and I got to blow things up. That was kind of fun at the time. And uh, I think other folks would agree. It's this idea that you know, when we tell people that who, who, who are having regrets about their service, that they were only doing their job, then you know, I think veterans actually know better. You know, veterans know they always had a choice, even if it was a hard one. When we try to take the personal responsibility piece entirely out of any narrative, I think we're taking out some of the complexity and with it some of the humanity. Now there are other stories that we that we can that we tell. I can talk I can talk about if I had more time, like some veterans are better than others, or Spouses who stay home with the families have it easy, but that's, that's fodder for another sermon, I guess. The U, our Unitarian Universalist congregations and communities have a helpful new resource to help us have better conversations and tell better stories. The UUA has created a military bridge builder toolkit. It's a set of structured conversations that allow civilians and military to sit together and talk about their, their own experiences without expectations. If you want to learn more about it, you can go to the Quest for Meaning website, questformeaning.org, and just type Bridge Builder into the search bar. I think you'll find that it's really helpful. And if folks have questions about it, feel free to contact me directly. My email will be at the end of this homily. A real homecoming is one where the traveler and the welcomer meet and see each other as they really are. Whether you're relieved or broken, confused or overjoyed, people need to see each other with their, as their true selves. The stories that we tell ourselves stand in the way of that seeing, and so it's time to move past them. Let's, uh, let's create spaces for people to tell the story their way. I believe it's through our stories that we can truly come home. Blessed be.